So uh, thank you, Sergey, uh, for the introduction. Um, as Sergey introduced, I belong to IBS Center for uh, Correlated Electron Systems uh, at Seoul National University. Um, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this honor to uh, start uh, this uh, wonderful workshop. Actually, this is my first on-site conference in two years. So that's, this is uh, very meaningful, I would say. So uh, when I first got invitation half a year ago, uh, I threw in this uh, title, assuming that uh, this is a work in progress, and I assume that it will be done by the time this, uh, this conference. Well, as usual, uh, things go slower than I expected. So uh, I realized that uh, I cannot talk about this for 45 minutes. So uh, for the later, If that works, no. Ah. You have to use the ah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, okay, so uh, I'll uh, in the later part of my presentation, I'll talk about symmetry protected nodal structures in ultra thin uh, strontium ruthenate fumes, and um, uh, cobalt disulfide. Um, yeah. Cobalt disulfide is bulk material. Meanwhile, strong ruthenate that I worked on is a thin film. So they seem to have, uh, they seem not to have any common uh, ingredient except both are ferromagnets. But as you will find, um, uh, there's an ingredient of aspect of uh, tunable anomalous hole conductivity. Okay, so uh, first uh, let me touch up and briefly discuss a large anomalous hole uh, conductivity uh, found in uh, cobalt disulfide. Uh, this is in collaboration with uh, Jun Young Che, Yan Jung Cho at Gyeongbuk National University, Se Young Park at Sungshil University, and Jin Hong Park, Jun Hong uh, Im, uh, who's in the audience at Aju University. I have to tell you that this work is really led by these people, uh, not me, I'm just uh, presenting in on behalf of them. So this uh, work started from uh, the, stu the research that we were doing uh, in my group that was on nickel disulfide and selenite. This is known to be an ideal uh, metal insulator transition system. Um, nickel, they are in uh, something called a pyrite structure this name comes from iron uh, disulfide uh, or fool's gold. Um, and this one has, as you replace sulfur, let me stand here. Um, yeah, as you uh, replace sulfur by uh, selenium, uh, it goes through a very well known uh, metal insulator transition, and there's no uh, symmetry change between sulfur end and uh, uh, selenium end. So uh, we were working on this, and uh, we found some uh, Hunt behavior uh, in this material. That was fun. Then for some reason, we, uh, we wanted to break this insulating state uh, by hole doping. And we know that uh, since uh, pyrite structure comes from iron diselenide, we know that we can dope or replace uh, nickel by cobalt or uh, iron. So we went on. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this insulating disappeared quickly, so, uh, and there's a, some, some a complicated phase diagram. But uh, we realized that, or as, uh, as well known, uh, cobalt disulfide is a ferromagnet. And you can further go on to uh, iron side and uh, a ferromagnet here shows a rough sketch of a ferromagnetic phase. One thing uh, I have to uh, tell you is that replacing uh, sulfur by selenium is isovalent and isostructural. Uh, on the other hand, replacing nickel by cobalt or, or iron, uh, uh, we have a hole doping uh, to the left-hand side. Now, since uh, nickel disulfide is an insulator, uh, you don't have any Fermi surface, but on the uh, selenium uh, end, 
you have very nice uh, Fermi surface which looks like this. And this big alpha pocket is a whole pocket. And this one, delta, is a very shallow uh, electron pocket. So if you go from here to there and make the system metal metallic, then you can expect that in cobalt disulfide, since we are hole doping, this electron pocket is going to go away and you expect more or less very simple uh, large, uh, large hole pocket. And uh, for your information, nickel is in two plus state and there are three, uh, eight uh, electrons in nickel, uh, nickel D band and uh, six in T2G and two in EG band. EG orbitals. However, when we took RPS data, this shows a Fermi surface map, and a Fermi surf surface map looks very complicated. So that was actually uh, quite a surprise. So uh, we decided to look into uh, the electronic structure further. And we grew very nice uh, cobalt disulfide uh, single crystal, as you see, very large, uh, shiny, high quality single crystals. Uh, the structure is the same as uh, that of uh, nickel disulfide. At uh, 127 Kelvin, uh, we have distinct uh, ferromagnetic uh, uh, transition, resistivity, and magnetization both show uh, 127. 123 Kelvin uh, ferromagnetic transition with a very small but finite thermal hysteresis. Um, at uh, 2 Kelvin, very low temperature, uh, rigid resistivity is very, very small in the micro ohm centimeter uh, region. And RRR value uh, is uh, about uh, 70 something, so uh, this shows a very high quality of the sample. Um, this uh, cobalt disulfide was known to be nearly half metal. Um, cobalt is in two plus state again, uh, seven electrons in uh, 3D. So there is only single uh, electron in EG orbital. And if this is fully polarized, you can expect that this can uh, only majority spin is uh, uh, occupied and minority spin almost empty. Indeed, uh, band calculation shows that uh, majority uh, minority band is uh, minority EG band is almost empty. S uh, just slightly touches uh, Fermi level. Meanwhile, majority spin in black is uh, mostly occupied. So, if we measure uh, uh, magnetization and uh, pull out. Uh, magnetic moment for cobalt, it turns out to be uh, 0.95. So this is very close to one Bohr magneton, meaning that this uh, single electron in each band is almost uh, uh, in a uh, uh, major uh, majority spin, uh, but hardly in a minority spin. So this is a very close to half metal. And usually, if you have uh, half metal, um, then you can expect large uh, anomalous hole conductivity, uh, obviously. So here, uh, I show you again um, the, our RPS data. Um, these uh, dotted lines represent uh, zone boundary, brilliant zone boundary. And um, this uh, white line, uh, white circle, is a uh, sort of uh, uh, large hole uh, surface pocket you expect, but you see um, many other structures, very complicated structures. Um, if we cut along this line, we have weak but uh, majority band, also minority band below TC, but if we heat up and take the same data at high temperature above TC, that these two band merge and we see only a single band. So uh, from this, we uh, find a few things. First, we have very complex uh, uh, surface states uh, or bands. Uh, I will tell you later. 
and that has to be addressed by Bom Jong Yang's group. And I was, I, my understanding is the paper is almost ready. Uh, a second thing to note is that um, uh, these uh, we have minority, uh, majority, and minority bands. So we have uh, spin split bands, and mostly the minority band is very very small. Majority band is very large. So this is uh, uh, close to uh, half metal, and this is a stoner type magnet. And uh, uh, one thing, one important thing is that this system can be hold up by replacing cobalt by uh, iron, and we can remove uh, the mo minority band, and only majority band is uh, occupied. So we can make this is uh, this uh, perfect half metal which I'm not going to talk about uh, here. In any case, uh, cobalt disulfide, we are not the first one. Actually, there's a group reporting that there are vial, uh, vial formions in cobalt disulfide, uh, but there are several issues, and even though I'm not going to talk about, I, I would, would like to let you know that Bom Jung Yang group is working on it, and hopefully they can uh, answer, uh, resolve those issues uh, uh, pretty quickly. Now, uh, let me go into uh, the whole data. So here, uh, I show you uh, two sets of data. Uh, one's a pure cobalt disulfide, and here, 5% uh, uh, of uh, cobalt is replaced by iron. And um, I'm showing you uh, anomalous whole resistivity as a function of uh, magnetic field. Uh, we can pull out the saturated uh, anomalous hole resistivity as well as uh, ordinary hole effect. And uh, here I show you uh, anomalous part of uh, saturated uh, hole resistivity. And this has a very peculiar uh, temperature dependence uh, for these two, two systems. Now, um, we grew many other uh, samples with different uh, dopings. And here we plot sigma xx versus sigma uh, whole anomalous whole conductivity, longitudinal conductivity versus uh, anomalous whole conductivity. And these are all the samples we grew some with the uh, um, iron substitution and some with the nickel uh, substitution. And here, this direction for the same sample, uh, for a, p a particular sample, we are go uh, lowering the temperature. Then uh, this has uh, a temperature dependence like this. And I heard that this, uh, my understanding is this flat part really represents intrinsic part of anomalous hole conductivity. So as you can see, this uh, anomalous hole conductivity depends on uh, this uh, ion concentration. So we can plot the maximum value of uh, saturated anomalous hole conductivity as a function of uh, ion doping or uh, nickel doping. And you see that it shows uh, particular um, uh, doping dependence. And this value, especially 5%, uh, is uh, 2,500 inverse ohm centimeter. And the red line here is the uh, conductance quantum, um, E squared over H, which is uh, a little below 900. And as far as we know, most of the materials that are supposed to have large uh, anomalous hole conductivity, they all fall in somewhere here. So this is really a large value, anomalously large value of anomalous hole conductivity. So the question is, why is it so large? And why does it peak at 0.05 here? Okay. So that's really the question. So um, I talked to my theory colleague, uh, Seyong Park, and uh, he did the calculation. And here is a 
new uh, DFT results based on uh, that's uh, consistent with our RPS data. And uh, it turns out to be that uh, the very coverture for anomalous solar conductivity comes mostly, uh, uh, comes mostly from this uh, gapped area here. So this is really strong source of very coverture. And uh, if we calculate uh, anomalous solar conductivity of a cobalt disulfide, pure di cobalt disulfide, as a function of uh, Fermi, uh, Fermi level position, uh, this anomalous hole conductivity has uh, uh, some interesting uh, doping dependence because basically Fermi level position is uh, the doping, is related to doping. So if we can hold up, we can, maybe we can go down here. So he actually put in uh, some hole value of 0.1, then uh, anomalous hole conductivity profile changes to this uh, yellow line. So that means by doping, maybe uh, uh, this uh, just bend structure just shifts instead of, um, uh, re uh, instead of uh, reorganizing the bend structure. So that's a good sign. You can by chemically, uh, by chemically doping, we can move Fermi level to this gap area gap region and enhance uh, uh, the anomalous hole conductivity. And that's uh, what, uh, what's happening, we believe. So uh, why uh, to answer uh, the, the two questions, why is it strong? Um, the reason is that, first of all, there's a strong very coverture source near Fermi level. So that's good. And it turns out that there are four of them and uh, it turns out that all of them have the same sign. So in many magnetic materials, these are very coverture sources. They have positive sign, negative sign. They cancel each other. But for this particular system, um, this, uh, there are a few uh, strong uh, very coverture sources. Uh, fortunately, they all add up. They all have the same sign. And we can move uh, Fermi level to this uh, region by hole doping, and that's why we believe this uh, uh, anomalous hole conductivity is very large. Of course, there is a discrepancy in uh, exact value of uh, calculated on anomalous hole conductivity and experimental value. Experimental value is actually much larger, but the overall uh, behavior behaviors are very similar. Okay, so uh, uh, just uh, talked about uh, the large anomalous hole conductivity we found in uh, cobalt disulfide. Now, now let me move on to uh, symmetry protected nodal structures in ultra thin strontium ruthenate thin film. Uh, film. And this work was in collaboration with Bomjong Yang Group at the center, and also uh, Taiwan No Group and Seyong Park at Sungshil University. Bomjong uh, played the uh, most critical role uh, in, the, in this work. So uh, the reason we started working on this uh, thin film is that uh, we wanted to work on some artificial systems. So I'm RPS guy, and I used to just cleave and look at, uh, take RPS data on single crystals. But these uh, single crystals run out quickly and you naturally, you would like to have new systems with uh, 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 interesting properties. And that's what actually people do uh, using 2D materials. They exfoliate and stack to uh, make uh, new properties, uh, produce new properties, and they also twist the bilayers and tri-layers and uh, all kinds of things. So that's one direction uh, people are uh, uh, doing. But you can also play the game with uh, cold atoms. So you using uh, cold atoms, you can, for example, uh, uh, simulate a Fermi uh, Hubbard uh, antiferromagnet or Hubbard model uh, using uh, cold atoms. There's a more conventional way, and that's growing uh, thin films. So people uh, grew 
thin films of uh, atomically thin uh, thin films and uh, you can grow uh, superstructures or you can grow ultra thin films and you can manipulate so that's the direction I, that I took uh, when I joined um, uh, the center and uh, my rationale was that say we go from thick film or basically bulk uh, system to ultra thin film uh, or mono layer and there is a dimensional change from dimensional transition from 3D to uh, 2D and uh, different things can happen. Also um, if you grow very thin film you can apply uh, strain uh, to the system either tensile or uh, compressive also uh, structural distortion you can induce a uh, structural distortion or uh, this is something we haven't done yet but this is one direction we are uh, uh, trying to go is that uh, we can use a proximity effect for example if we grow your system on ferromagnetic uh, substrate then you can induce uh, ferromagnetism in uh, 2D system so this is what I had in mind uh, when I joined the group and we moved into uh, the business of ultra thin film. So to do that, uh, we built, with the support of IBS, uh, we built a cluster system for uh, in situ RPS. Um, here I show you uh, um, how the system looks uh, schematically. I have two RPS systems. One of them has a spin uh, detector. Uh, I also have uh, PLD for oxide thin films and MB for uh, calcogenide thin films and here is a, a prep chamber and once I grow uh, films or some system uh, I don't have to pull out the sample to do RPS all these samples are transferred in vacuum without ever ex being exposed to the air and uh, they are transferred to RPS systems and RPS or spin RPS data are uh, taken in these chambers. The system, the real system looks like this. Uh, here is a RPS system with a spin detector. Here is a normal RPS. Uh, MB is on this side and PLD is hiding uh, here. And again, uh, oxide PLD, uh, sorry, this is oxide MB, uh, PLD, sorry. Yeah, this is MB, uh, spin detector, RPS1 and RPS2 and samples are transferred to RPS systems once they are grown in growth chambers. So what do I look at? Um, uh, I decide to look at uh, strontium ruthenate uh, films. Uh, first of all, that's the best uh, film that you can grow uh, in, uh, in PLD, uh, which was available when I joined uh, IBS uh, at the center. And second, a strontium uh, ruthenate is a very interesting system. It's uh, um, one of the uh, perovskite systems. And it's a metallic system. And uh, it has a ferromagnetic transition at uh, 160 Kelvin, around 160 Kelvin. Uh, it has moderate U. It also has moderate spin orbit coupling. So, uh, this system has all the ingredients that are interesting for correlated topo uh, topological systems. Um, the ruthenium is in 4 plus state and uh, it has 4 electrons in T2G. So we are dealing with uh, T2G orbitals, mostly T2G orbitals. Um, so we grow uh, 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 strontium ruthenium film uh, with the PLD and read uh, oscillator, uh, oscillation and AFM uh, and read the spots show they are, are very uh, high quality samples. You can see AFM cut shows uh, nice step edges. That means uh, strontium ruthenate grew epitaxially to STO um, uh, substrate. Uh, if we measure longitudinal resistivity as a function of temperature, for thick film, we have RRR value of 11, o, o, uh, over 11. This is one of the best uh, strontium ruthenate film grown in a PLD system. 
and we can reduce the thickness down to four uh, unit cell and um, as this uh, magnetization measurement show even down to four unit cell we have uh, we, um, the system is in ferromagnetic state but if you go below three unit cell um, then it loses uh, ferromagnetism and becomes a uh, paramagnetic so uh, uh, we are going to uh, perform we did uh, RPS measurement on these films and uh, this is our first map from uh, a 10 unit cell film and we have nice dispersions here as you can see and one can we can compare uh, our uh, RPS data with published data in uh, uh, this uh, paper uh, that was uh, some time ago uh, this was grown in MBE and uh, as far as RPS uh, data goes um, the quality there is not much uh, quality difference so that means our film is very good and in situ RPS works quite nicely so uh, the first thing is that uh, uh, we first looked at uh, I would like to um, briefly touch upon dual ferromagnetism uh, this was published in uh, PRL last year. So uh, the reason I'm touching upon uh, this uh, dual ferromagnetism is that uh, people normally uh, usually believe that uh, strontium ruthenate um, has itinerant uh, ferromagnetism. Uh, that's because we have high density of state at formula level, which is good for uh, ferromagnetism. Uh, also, uh, the magnetic moment or ruthenium magnetic moment is not two. If it were from local magnetism, you expect uh, two or more uh, bore magneton, but the measured value is about 1.6 bore magneton. So that means uh, this certainly has itinerancy, uh, itinerant component. However, there was some uh, argument that. Uh, based on RPS data, uh, the spin splitting does not go away, even uh, uh, very to very high temperature, it just disappears. That means uh, there's certain uh, local component in the magnetism. So uh, we uh, decide to look at the details of the electronic structure. Um, here is a schematic uh, Fermi surface of uh, perovskite material and uh, when uh, going through a uh, ferromagnetic transition you expect each band splits into uh, majority and minority bands okay uh, in this uh, particular geometry we mostly see uh, spin uh, majority band of uh, something called beta band here uh, but here also we see a uh, very sharp uh, spin minority band and we go and take a uh, spin RPS data at A point and B point and if you look at uh, spin spectra from A point you see that majority spins are dominant over uh, minority spin over whole energy range but in the case of B uh, this point uh, here at low energy side we have minority band is dominant but at high binding energy side we have majority band uh, majority spins dominant <coughs> that means that um, so these are from two different uh, momentum uh, points and at uh, at high binding energy, independent of momentum points, uh, majority spins are always dominant. But if we go to uh, low energy side, depending on the position, sometimes we have minority dominant, uh, majority dominant, and sometimes minority dominant. So we decide to look at um, the momentum dependence. And you see, at uh, low energy, we see blue and red. So some, somewhere we have minority spins dominant, but somewhere uh, mostly uh, majority dominant. But if you go to high binding energy, um, it's mostly um, just uh, majority spin. So uh, uh, 
what we are claiming is that at low, uh, low binding energy, it's more like uh, itinerant character. Um, but if you go to uh, high, uh, high binding energy side, it's more like a uh, uh, local character. So uh, this system has both itinerant and uh, local characters and uh, has a dual magnetism. Um, let me just skip this one. So anyway, the main message for this uh, presentation is that uh, if we look at uh, low binding energy of the system, um, it has a uh, itinerant character and we can analyze the uh, system using uh, band calculation. So let me move on to nodal features, symmetry protected nodal features of the system. Um, so uh, strontium ruthenate is of course uh, has been known for a very long time and if, uh, more than 20 years ago um, uh, it was noticed that by doping or growing thin film, as a function of temperature, this uh, anomalous uh, hole resistivity changes sign. So <coughs> this is very uh, peculiar because uh, before that, uh, it was believed that anomalous hole effect should be proportional to uh, magnetization. But here, magnetization hardly changes, but uh, <coughs> Anomalous hole effect change, change, uh, not only varies, but uh, even changes the sign. So to understand uh, this behavior, these be, uh, people propose that there is a, a magnetic monopole, and that's what uh, leads to this uh, anomalous anomalous hole effect. And this uh, uh, magnetic monopole is supposed to uh, exist near the gamma point. But subsequent uh, theoretical calculations um, found out that uh, there are other uh, positions that produces uh, various curvature, especially in this work. Um, they are actually at different positions. In, in fact, uh, our thin film, uh, we measured uh, anomalous hole resistivity as a function of uh, applied magnetic field for different thicknesses of uh, thin films. If you look at uh, low temperature data, that looks like this. And there's a peak, and we believe that's uh, due to uh, topological hole effect, but I'm not going to talk about that. That's uh, published in uh, these papers. Uh, what I'm focusing on is this anomalous hole part here. Now, if you look at uh, four unicell data and five unicell data at lo uh, low temperature, you see that anomalous hole sign changes between four unicell and five unicell. So, uh, even in our data, uh, there's a thickness dependence in uh, uh, anomalous hole effect. So, sign changes as a function of uh, the thickness. So why does it happen? Uh, so we decide to investigate that aspect using uh, RPES. First of all, we took uh, spin RPES data by, uh, again, uh, magnetizing uh, the system uh, in situ. Uh, then we can do spin RPES data. And above TC, the spin uh, goes away. Meanwhile, below TC, we have a uh, spin polarization. <coughs> we, if you look at the band structure uh, of four unicell, uh, very thin film. Uh, we have a uh, pretty complex um, uh, uh, Fermi, surface, uh, Fermi surfaces, but we can fit uh, the data using uh, a tight binding model. And we can start from there. So uh, to the uh, perovskite uh, material, has a generic uh, Fermi surface topology that looks like this. So we have beta band from YZ and ZX, and gamma band from XY, and alpha also from uh, YZ and ZX. Once it goes through a ferromagnetic transition, that splits into majority band and min minority bands. And uh, let us focus on this uh, beta majority and uh, gamma minority 
and due to uh, spin of coupling, they hybridize. Uh, and if you focus on these, um, that looks like this. It turns out that this mixing between uh, upspin and downspin, or majority and minority between two uh, these two bands, uh, leads to nodal lines, that's a beta and gamma band crossing, but also here, uh, made uh, around the pi pi point, that's uh, the band near pi pi point, uh, that's made of yz zx band. They form something, uh, uh, they form a quadri uh, quadratic band crossing. So uh, with a spin of coupling, it turns out that these are very strong sources of uh, Betty's curvature. And this uh, nodal line looks like this. Meanwhile, uh, quadratic uh, band crossing or QBC exists near uh, pi pi point or M point here. And um, Bomjang's group uh, did the calculation of uh, various coverture based on the uh, model. And this uh, various coverture uh, is uh, max uh, maximum near uh, these uh, four corners of uh, the brilliant zone. And these are what uh, contribute to uh, the anomalous hole effect. <coughs> and among these two, uh, it turns out that uh, this uh, various coverture, the contribution mostly comes from uh, quadratic band crossing near the endpoint. Um, now, this is a theory. Uh, we wanted to uh, uh, check it uh, from the experimental side. And earlier, uh, the, uh, we proposed, uh, there's a theory work from uh, us that uh, this uh, Betty's curvature is somewhat related to uh, orbital angular momentum. And we know that uh, uh, orbital angular momentum can be detected by circular dichroism arpets. So we used uh, circular dichroism arpets to um, detect a hidden berry coverture in uh, tungsten diselenide, which was published in this paper. Uh, the point is that now we can apply the same technique to our system, and we performed the CD arpets on this uh, strontium rosanate centrium, and we found out that this uh, CD arpets pattern is very close to orbital angular momentum, uh, and which is also uh, fairly close to uh, the Beric's coverture. So um, this is uh, more direct evidence for existence of uh, Beric's coverture near four corners. So here, uh, to summarize, sort of, um, uh, the, uh, the theory part, we have uh, QBCs, and depending on where uh, Fermi level is uh, located or how large the splitting uh, splitting is between majority and minority bands. Uh, we can have uh, different um, anomalous hole conductivity as a function of Fermi level position or <coughs> exchange splitting. Um, we took uh, many data uh, on different samples, different thicknesses, and we found out that uh, these uh, uh, anomalous hole uh, receivity sort of follows this line as a function of uh, uh, the magnetic moment for uh, ruthenium. Um, now, since uh, we know that by changing uh, Fermi level, we can uh, tune anomalous hole conductivity, um, this is something we also tried by using ionic liquid gating. On uh, four unit cell, five unit cell centium, we put, uh, we use uh, ionic liquid gating and apply the strong bias. Uh, and uh, as you can see, this anomalous, not the top part, this is a topological hole effect, but this anomalous part, uh, we can have almost zero anomalous hole conductivity, but here fairly strong anomalous hole conductivity. Um, and uh, also uh, for uh, five unit cell, we were able to change the value of anomalous hole uh, conductivity. So um, uh, the key message is that uh, 
uh, as a function of temperature and uh, thickness and uh, uh, bias voltage, uh, gate voltage, we can tune uh, anomalous hole conductivity. So this is really a tunable uh, anomalous hole conductivity due to this uh, topological structures, uh, structures in uh, strontium ruthenate in here. Now, uh, how many minutes do I have? Oh, okay. So, uh, our, my future direction, our future direction will be that uh, we want to grow very thin film and use a proximity effect. So, let me just <coughs> go over in one minute. Um, we can grow now down to single layer and use strain uh, to induce a metal insulator transition. So, uh, using uh, whether we use a CTO, uh, calcium titanate, or strontium titanate, we can change uh, the system from metal to insulator, or uh, we can use a strain to induce a metal insulator transition. Uh, so, uh, for um, compressive strain, we have metal, but for uh, tensile strain, uh, the system, one unit cell system goes into uh, mud insulator. So you can see that as we go into mud insulating state, um, the lower Hubbard vent uh, spectral wave comes up. So hopefully uh, we can use the same technique for proximity effect and so grow single layer on uh, magnetic systems and find a more topological effect. So here is my summary. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, we saw large anomalous hole conductivity in cobalt disulfide, and we also have symmetry protected nodal structures in ultra thin uh, strontium ruthenate film, and both have uh, tunable anomalous hole conductivity as the invariant. Okay, thank you for your attention. <laughs> oh. Thank you very much, Chang Kim, okay. for this uh, very nice. Uh, presentation. I think we still have some time for questions. So, audience, please. Yes, I see a question there. So, uh, uh, wait, wait, there will be a uh, map. I think your microphone works. Okay, so I have a question yeah. about the last slide of the first part. Uh -huh. where you had wire points in the thermonic material. Hold on a second. Uh, if they can put up the sc my file again, I can show you. Ah. Okay. So the last slide of your first part. Sorry. Uh, somehow this one does work anymore. Mm -hmm. So how do I go to the front again? Uh, with the laser pointer, no? Can you switch? Uh, yes. Ah, yeah, yeah, sorry, now it works. This okay. one? So, yes? Yeah. So you mentioned that uh, this anomalous hole effect is coming from the gapped yeah. wire point yeah. that, you th that we see around minus 0 0.1 EV or something like that. Uh, so yeah. first of all, uh, I want to understand how you open a gap in a wire point. Like if you uh, no, this is not actually a wire point, uh -huh. no. So with even without spin of coupling, the, the gap is already open. And uh, I mean, if it's a, a vial point, you wouldn't see a gap. Uh -huh. uh, there's a gap, and that's due to uh, mirror symmetry breaking, as far as I understand. Actually, Junon Rim is uh, in, the, in the audience. He knows the real answer. Um, but anyway, um, the, the gap is open even without mm. uh, spin of coupling. Uh. So is this a wire point or not? No, no it's not. No, so it's, it's not. really accidentally a small... Yeah, uh, with a small gap, uh -huh. uh, low energy, and it happens that uh, there are four of them in, the mm. in 2D plane, and they all have the same sign. 
So they all add up and gives uh, leads to very large anomalous hole conductivity. Mm, okay. I was a little bit puzzled because the peak the in the blue curve, mm -hmm. the like the peak is around minus. Okay, maybe this is detail, but it's uh, you minus mean here? zero point zero five in your right ah, plot, yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah. Uh, in the left uh, band structure, it's like minus one point something. Uh, well, that's yeah. This uh, this is from DFT calculation. Uh -huh. So it's a little different. Um, uh -huh. well, okay. not so much different. So ours is uh, maximum around 0.05, uh -huh. but we haven't done all the steps in between, so we don't know exactly where the maximum is. But uh, we did 0 0.05 and 0.1. So among three of them, 0.05 is the largest. And that's not too far away from mm -hmm. the calculation. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, more questions? Oh, there's one more there. Yes. Um, so related question. Yep. Um, so how do you know uh, this animal's whole effect really comes from the intrinsic effect, other than uh. the fact that you, know, you yeah. have a plateau, basically what you're trying to say, I suppose, say it's independ most more independent of uh, disorder strengths, I guess that's right, what... Right, right, right. Yeah. So uh, here is a sort of flat part. So um, I heard that uh, intrinsic part shows up uh, within this region, and if you go to higher conductivity, skew scattering dominates, so usually it comes out down this way, flat, and down again. And uh, if you have this uh, flat part, then your um, anomalous, hole, anomalous hole resistivity is proportional to square of longitudinal resistivity, if you look at the formula. So, uh, and that's what uh, this anomalous hole conductivity or the uh, coupleless uh, Luttinger theory predicts. So but, but the magnitude is so much larger, right, than your band structure calculation? Well, okay, band yeah, we had that discussion, and uh, my theory colleague tells me that that's not too bad, actually. That's not bad? Yeah, or not bad, yes, no, yes, or not. yeah. But I, I'm just wondering whether there's any other reason why you could um, eliminate this Q scattering scenario, for example, mm -hmm. for your data. Uh, Usually that may give you a much, la much larger number of whole effect. Right, right, right. So, but uh, again, um, if it were from skew scattering, you would see uh, very increasing behavior, but that's not what we see. So that's how usually um, uh, we, uh, we know it's uh, mostly from intrinsic uh, anomalous hole effect. So that's uh, how we determine. All right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I think uh, we probably have to move on. Uh, so let's yeah. uh, thank again our first speaker for this thank wonderful you. lecture. Thank you.